Wet Kiss. Plus lip action from Larry King and the Fresh Prince. Monday in it. From New York, the pistol whipping capital of the world. It's late night with her the world's most dangerous band with David Sanborn. And now, a man who would gladly cater your child's bar or bat mitzvah. I'm laughing to myself because I, I just thought of something one of our stage managers, Biff Henderson, said before the show. <laughs> 150. <laughs> the matter of uh, Biff's weight came up. Hey, uh, welcome to the program, ladies and gentlemen. It's Friday night. Now, uh, I'll tell you, what is the deal on this Saddam Hussein guy? Is the guy just completely nuts or what? Now, here today, he proposed this deal. Uh, we would get the ambassador in Kuwait in return for Pete Rose. What? Who, how, are we going to... Somebody says, take it. You know, uh, and then Iran said that they would supply food and medicine uh, to Iraq uh, if uh, they thought it was going to be used for humanitarian reasons. Food and medicine to be used for humanitarian reasons. You know, if there's one thing you think of, when you hear the word humanitarian, I guess it is Iran, isn't it? <laughs> And you know, uh, we have a brand new Air Force One, a $50 million, completely, highly technologically equipped 747 to transport the President of the United States. That's wonderful. Yeah. They took their inaugural flight earlier today, and everything went perfectly except for one minor glitch. A half an hour into the flight, Vice President Dan Quayle got into a shoving match with one of the new kids on the block, and they had to <laughs> damn plane around and just go back. <laughs> One fifty. <laughs> well, you know this this program's pretty good. Look at look, we have. Well, the the least I can do. Thank you, thank you. I'm glad you appreciate you? it. Yeah, I'm so happy. Yeah, to do I so. really appreciate what it. What are you doing Lord? this weekend? Oh, this weekend? Oh, I yeah. got a lot of things to do. I got yeah. parties and yeah. swinging times. You and clubs, your wife. Yeah. All kinds of stuff. Yeah. And, and what are you going to be doing? Oh, you know what I'm going to do this weekend. Yeah. And you oh. know I'm very, very nervous about it. What are you doing? I know it's an honor, but I can't help it. I'm still very, very nervous. Oh, I'm, I have I'm, heard I'm a little bit about this. I'm hosting the Miss America pageant Saturday night. You are. I'm really very nervous about the song. Listen, oh, okay. I think don't worry. Just fine, though. I'll t tonight, after the show, you and I will get together. We'll run the song a few times. It'll be no problem. 150, he says. I know. What are you saying? You don't believe him? Uh, well, I don't know. I guess he could weigh 150 in his dream. Yeah. <laughs> and then he woke up, you know. <laughs> I wanna, like one of these guys. Oh, man. Yeah, I give it a shot. Um, uh, from, uh, from the home office in Lebanon, Pennsylvania tonight, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to do our, uh, what do we do, these top ten lists, do the yeah. category, and then we get on with the big show. Okay. Yeah, I'll give her a show. <laughs> you should have seen the top ten, I'll give her uh, the category, uh, top ten new features on Air Force One. All How about right. that? I was just talking about the new Air Force One. Coincidental. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> hey, hi, Dave. Yeah, here we go. Uh, top ten features on the new Air Force One. Number ten. The external PA system so a president can greet drivers on interstate highways below. <laughs> yeah, that's not a bad idea. There are tax dollars at work. Uh, number nine, bitchin' flame decals, okay? Uh, number eight, a copper tone banner for flying over beach. I like that. Number seven, fake antenna to make people think they have a cellular phone on board. Uh, number six, button that transforms plane into glowing saucer to screw with farmers in Midwest. Uh, number five, plastic monster on wing to intimidate foreign dignitaries from, you know, third world nations. Oh, number four, a melon baller. Number three, uh, pet door for Millie, the president's flying dog. Number two, stealth babes. Well, I like the sound of that. And the number one new feature on Air Force One, phony steering wheel so Quail can pretend he's flying flying. Oh, by the way, Paul, that's one of the little things I, I do to make travel easier on myself. And, and this is something you and your family can do whenever you're on a plane, to make the flight more enjoyable. When you get on shortly before takeoff, uh, turn on the little call light and get the flight attendant over there, and then you say, excuse me, miss, do you think we'll see any flying saucers? Uh... <sighs> hey, 
uh, let's do our viewer mail. Uh, tonight, as always, the presentation of the viewer mail is being assisted by, here it is, the Puma 206 Access Robotic Arm. Say hello to that amazing bit of machinery. There it is. Look at this thing. It's just a wonder of modern technology. Oh, nice to see you. How are you? All right. Here. Hey. Hey, watch it. All right. Letter number. Letter. Hey, hey. What are, you, what are you guys rehearsing or what? Thank you. Thank you very much. Letter number one. Actual letters from actual viewers from all over the North American continent. Dear Dave, when is Tom Snyder finally coming back from vacation? Still waiting after all these years, Kathy Farrell, London, Ontario. You know, that's, that's a good question. Tom, of course, used to do the program uh, uh, in this time slot before we got on the air. And, uh, you know, I got a card from right here. Let's see. When is Tom Snyder coming back from... Uh, August 1st, 1990. Dear Dave, we'll be back from vacation soon. Sincerely, Tom. It says that right there. Oh, oh wait a minute. Oh, look at this. Maybe not. Uh, perhaps it'll be a little longer than we thought. Greetings. From... <laughs> letter, letter number two. Here we go, letter. Why, thank you so much, Debbie. Nice to see you. Uh, dear Dave, what is it like at a Letterman family reunion? You know, we just had kind of a family Did reunion. you have a yeah, family reunion? Yeah. Uh, could you show us some home movies of one? The letter goes on. Sort of interested, Debbie Clem, Dallas, Texas. Well, uh, well, Debbie, it's pretty much the same thing every year. Hal, Hal, do you have that videotape I brought back from my family reunion? Sure. All right, uh, show the folks that videotape. This is my family reunion. And Hi, Dave. Uh, I'm your nephew, Joe. Can, can I borrow 150 bucks? No. Nope. Dave, I'm Mary, third cousin on your mother's side. Could you buy me a car? Nope. Yeah, Dave, I'm Chris, your sister's uh, kid from, from your first husband's marriage. Uh, could you buy me a speedboat? Nope. No good bastard. Your show sucks. Hi, Dave, I'm Bill. I work with your Aunt Shirley. So that's, that's what the old family reunion. Let her. Letter number three. Thank you. Hey, hey, cut that out. Give me that. God damn yeah, it. Unplug you, you low-life son of a... Get, come here. Give me that. Well, I take a pair of pliers to you in a second. Uh, dear Dave, are you an organ donor? If so, which organ have you decided to donate? We feel this is important to know. Sincerely, Patrick Hayden, uh, Marlon Harum, took two guys to write this letter. Uh, gee, you know, I never really uh, thought about it, uh, Patrick, but, but sure, I'd... I'd be happy to donate an organ, I guess. Sure, I think I could do that. Let's see what I can do. I yeah, I get an organ. Oh. How about my liver? Sorry, Al, I didn't mean to frighten you. You should donate your hairpiece. Look out, there's liver! Oh! <laughs> Letter, kids, you really shouldn't be tossing your liver around like that. Do this at home. Letter number four. Here we go. Letter number four. Man, we have quite a program tonight. Fresh, fresh Prince. Fresh yeah. Prince. He fresh was on Prince. your record, wasn't he? Yes, he own? was. Yeah. David Sanborn, Larry King. He was on my record. Huh? He was, Larry King, Larry was, King on was also on the record? Yeah. I didn't realize that. He did a that. recitation. Dear Dave, letter USA. number four begins, I would like to invite you to my town's 300th anniversary celebration. Enclosed is a list of planned activities. Linda Marley at Cheltenham, Pennsylvania. Cheltenham, Pennsylvania, that's beautiful country. Uh, boy, 300 years, that sounds like a lot of fun. Mm. You ever been to one of those things, Paul? Uh, no, but I, I'd love Man, to go. Yeah, this Cheltenham, I've, I've driven through there. That's a beautiful part of the country, and really? they're having their 300th anniversary. What do you, let's go. Let's it sounds go like over fun. there. All right, come on, we'll go now. We'll go out there to Cheltenham, and be careful. I tossed my liver here on the floor. Oh, watch yourself. How do you do? We'll be back momentarily. Good night. Gee, not much celebrating going on. Are you sure this is it? Absolutely. Look at this sign. Oh, yeah. Welcome to Cheltenham, Pennsylvania. Oh, wait a minute. Established 1906. I, I thought this was their 300th anniversary. Hey, something's not right. Let's get out of here. All right, your wallets and your watches. Let's go. We should have known, Dave, those damn sneaky Amish. All right, let's clean house. The preceding has been a fictional portrayal of the activities of a few ruthless criminals. 
In no way is it meant to reflect on the majority of Amish Americans who are decent, law-abiding citizens. Mr. Schaefer's wardrobe by Botany 500. the super we have a window out over here yeah, we have, yeah. the place is getting wackier and wackier <laughs> i know what you mean sir smell and touch can predict can select can actually choose the expiration date of perishable items anton put it put on the blindfold all right is the blindfold in place anton okay may we have the perishable item lady with tonight's perishable item Anton, I can tell you only that tonight's perishable item is ground chuck. And we're not really looking for the expiration date. We're looking for the last day by which it must be sold. Okay. All right, testing it now. Ingesting a little raw beef. Wiping his face. Handing it back to the perishable uh, item lady. I say this should be sold by <laughs> September the 10th. All right. Anton says the ground chuck must be sold by September 10th. Now, perishable item lady, may we see the actual date on the ground chuck? Oh, one day off! Very, very close, September the 9th. Nice job, Anton. Still you. That's amazing. It's amazing. Hey, Anton, I don't want you to be discouraged. You gave it a great shot, and you were only one day off. It was very close. Too. It's very tricky with, yeah. very tricky with ground chuck. Yeah. Oh boy! Our first guest has a uh, nightly radio program. He has his own. Uh, hey, Larry, I want to hear all about the Goodwill Games. Tell me everything about the Goodwill Games. Are you? Do you mock me? No, I'm, I'm, I just asked you a question. They you were you were like the host of the Goodwill Games. I was. I had a lot of fun. It was an unusual experience. I right, tell people what they are. This is like the second second time they've had them. Yeah. yeah. It started in Moscow uh, four years ago. It's Ted Turner's idea. Ted Turner to... thinks this up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. He well, this was at the time the Soviet Union didn't come. We didn't go to the games in '80. That's right. The Soviet Union didn't come to the Olympics in '84. '84. Los so Angeles. Ted thought, right. Why don't we have the United States and Soviet Union compete? This Without is dumb. politics. Without sure. politics. Yeah. So let's have a good will game. Then yeah. someone else said, well, why don't we add other countries uh -huh. that have people that are good right. in swimming? And right. Stuff. So we had the good will games in Moscow, and the second one's in Seattle. Mm -hmm. And now they're scheduling the third one in Soviet Union, back in the Soviet Union right. in 1994. So, so it's Off years of the, good, of the Olympic Games yeah, to have the Goodwill Games. It's not like the Olympics, but most of the nations that compete in the Olympics compete in the Goodwill Games. Right. It, Except the proviso is in every event. There must be an entrant from the Soviet Union and the United States. Oh, That's I see. Yeah, so no I matter what the event is, rock so, throwing. So it's a little be. then a little like the Pan American Games, except not necessarily because right. and there, countries there from fun Pan America would not necessarily be in the Goodwill Games. And it's every two years. And every four years. Every it's four the years. Opposite. <laughs> you know, it ain't it ain't brain surgery, David. It, <laughs> hey, hey, speak for yourself, Larry. <laughs> Well, I heard that you mocked them. <laughs> no, I wasn't. Every, and they, they really were. They were a lot of fun to do. The competition Seattle, was first rate. The competition was first rate. It was fun anchoring. It's a different kind of energy. Seattle's level. a beautiful town. Have you ever anchored anything? Mm, no. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, I asked that because it's interesting because I'm a judge. I heard you mention that you're going to host the Miss America. I'm a judge at Miss America. Oh, are you really? Yeah. Now, you're why would you host. do that? Because I heard you were going to sing the song. Yeah, 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 yeah. Now, what, what will you do? Will you, you're not going to be down there hitting on those girls, are you, Larry? My wife and I are going down to... That's right. David. I'm sorry. No, you. That's what I thought. No, the young girl. All right, now. Um... <laughs> anyway, um, so it was fun to do. Yeah. It was a different experience. I don't know why I don't do it every week. Mm -hmm. It's hard to anchor. Yeah, it's yeah. a different kind of... It's difficult of because you get things, interview. you're a traffic cop. You get stuff coming and That's going. Right. And another thing, you're watching the events like the audience is. It's strange what we've what come What was your told. most dramatic moment of the uh, sporting cavalcade they call the Good, uh, Goodwill Games? <laughs> I, I think having a Corbett and Comedy John together. Oh, boxing. 
What was it? Explain. Oh, Olga Corbett. Explain something to me. No, I, I, I've been watching television a long time. Uh -huh. Explain. Yeah. Just explain. Maybe yeah. I'm dumb. Yeah. Maybe I'm old. No, you're fine. Uh, yeah. Explain right. the expired meat bit. Oh, come on. No, come on. No. Come on. Oh, Larry, come on. I, oh, no. Explain. I explained the Goodwill Games. Explain the expired meat. I mean, what is, if he got it right, does he win something? No, he doesn't get it right. It's a demonstration of an unusual skill. <laughs> <laughs> He's in the next Goodwill game. Yeah, there you go. Oh, now, see, there would be a category. Perishable. Yeah. Oh, that's right. You have from Kuwait. Yeah. And he bite into yeah, something. And he would judge and he'd what, say, does he also like drink milk yeah, and say? Well, yeah, dairy products, meat. I believe, Anton, tonight was the first meat product we had, right? Yeah. He, he got one right on the, I think, half and half. He hit right on the money the other Someone day. Someone told me the other day. On sour cream, <laughs> if they have an expiration date, right. does that mean it goes good? Ah, good one. <laughs> Anton, let's hear one. Good question. Uh, yeah, thank you. Yeah. Uh, now tell me a little bit about your relationship with Albert Brooks. I love Albert Brooks. Uh, where did you first meet him? Albert Brooks. No, Albert. You got a stranger? <laughs> it's a village audience tonight. Uh, Al <laughs> Albert Brooks. I first met him by interviewing him. Then he invited, he, he used me in his movie, Lost in America. That's he right. used a portion of my radio That's show. You're the very beginning of that movie. That's right, I'm yeah. the, the radio show is the yeah. beginning of that show. Yep. And then I got to be very friendly. And Albert is strange. Mm -hmm. He's never been on my TV show. All right. I write about him and tell me more. I write about you. You're in that book, mm -hmm. too. And I write about how he would come to my radio show, but never, he's never been booked. In other words, we have never been able to say, Albert Brooks is mm -hmm. the guest. But he'll appear at strange times. And he'll just come in, sit down, show up, and start uh -huh. talking. Like the last... Two times ago, like talking about the Goodwill Games, he walked in right. during the steroid controversy. <clears throat> right. He, he came on, I think, just before you were leaving to go host the Goodwill Games. I heard that. That's right. Yeah. He came yeah. in and he talked about, other, among other things, a steroid Olympics. Mm -hmm. That sh there should be an Olympics for people who use steroids. It's, it's not a bad idea. He said, you know, he said Fox could use it at 10 o'clock Sunday night. <laughs> it's a hole in their lineup. And they could have things like, he says, like, uh, he's got a guy named Flash Perkins. Uh -huh. And Flash does the 103 6. Well, <laughs> <laughs> and he's got a guy named uh, Ivan, Ivan Marmelstein who throws the, uh, what is that thing, the discus? Yeah. He hit a Delta flight. <laughs> 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 but what, wasn't he also saying something, uh, the Goodwill Games, is something had to do with uh, used furniture and stuff? Oh, that's what he thought. Yeah. He asked, <laughs> you heard that, that yeah. was funny. He said to me, <laughs> he said to me, you're going to do the Goodwill Games. I said, yeah. He says, is that where the athletes leap? over old furniture <laughs> donated by people. <laughs> awful, awful. Now listen, listen, the next time you come on the show, uh, ha have your little friend Albert come with you. Sure, I'd you love to bring him. And by the way... Or, or have him just, just call up on the phone. He, he called us once on the air, and then well, we had him... You never know when he, When was the last time he was here? Gee, it's been like four years. Yeah, I think there's something manic about yeah. Albert. Well, He's he got is. a new movie coming. Yep, yep. And it's a Meryl, big film. Meryl, Meryl Streep, Street, yeah. And I'm excited for him. Yeah. He's a terrific guy. Uh, the book here is called uh, Larry King, Tell Me More. Now, you also have a television program coming up on NBC. Oh, yeah. Or, oh, I'm, I'm sorry, I was thinking The Fresh Prince. <laughs> <laughs> no, you have one as well, don't you? Uh, on October... Uh, yeah, in addition to all the things, on October 28th, Sunday night, October 28th, we're going to do a kind of experiment. NBC's yeah. going to do a variety show. Yeah. And I'm, they've asked me to host it. And we'll see how it goes, and it might be a regular. And among the guests, just announced are The Simpsons <laughs> and David Letterman. Yeah, well, we'll know. We'll know. We'll see. No, 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 no. I'll, I'll be there. For you. Knowing, I'll be there. Knowing David, David is already thinking about it. Yeah, that's right. He's already nervous thinking about it. Thinking of ways to back out of it. No, you can't back out. You can't back out. <laughs> thinking of trips I might have to take. Thinking, <laughs> thinking of weddings I may have to attend. <laughs> Uh, now, anyway, well, we're, I'm looking forward to this. It should be a lot of fun. You're, you're like the busiest man in show business, and, it, and it's amazing because I guess two years ago, or perhaps less than two years ago, you had major heart surgery. Years, yeah. 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 Feeling yeah. better than ever. That, by the way, I, I write about that in the book. That, one of the highlights of that heart surgery was not so much the heart surgery, mm -hmm. was coming on this program. Oh, really? To talk about it, because that's a night I'll never forget. I'm explaining what it's like to have a heart attack. I mean, it was really, it was, it was, the audience was quiet just like this. And as I'm describing the pain, the being carried in on the gurney, the emergency room, David is salivating. I mean, he's like, he's like dreaming that it was happening to him. It's like, 
God, if I could only have a heart attack. <laughs> I was having trouble breathing and everything. I was going to kind of get into it, yeah. So, and you could put this in David's mind. So on my variety show on October 28th, something might happen to you. Yeah. You'd love it. You know what? You have a death wish. No, yes, no, you no, do. no, you do. no. Not a death wish, no, an injury no, wish. No. Okay, you're just, yeah, okay. Listen, uh, Larry, good to see you again. Good to see and, you. And uh, I'm glad you had a great summer. It does little tricks. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, coming up in this half hour, the <laughs> I know, we're late, ain't we? Uh, Bruce Willis, Big City, every now and then I like to get away for a while, and when I do, I head for some place where there's fresh air, trees, and a 115-ton diesel locomotive. Here, take a look, watch carefully. You know, if you're thinking of opening a roadside melon stand, I can tell you from personal experience that there really are only three important things to consider. Location, location, location. Hi, I'm Nelson Burton, Jr. for the PBA. Uh, more and more we find that uh, what the beginning bowler is not doing is putting enough force or power behind the ball itself. Uh, watch this. Well, it was, a, it was a lovely ceremony, truly very, very beautiful, and, and Gene and Roger have never looked happier. Now it's, it's time to cut the cake. I'm so happy, I don't, I don't know what to say. Now, ladies and gentlemen, 10 sheets of brightly colored glass. This is just for the kids, really. Okay, folks, three words says it all, giant, Domino fun. Here we go. <laughs> Faster than a speeding bullet. Yeah, yeah, that's probably true. Uh, able to leap tall buildings in a single bound. Yeah, I have to go along with that. Uh, more powerful than a locomotive? Well, see, there's where I have some trouble. <laughs> this is what we have, uh, some ceramic items, some uh, lamps, a uh, pyramid of uh, peanut brittle, uh, a lovely assortment of uh, cheap pottery craft, some beautiful custom-made storm windows, and again, a very nice assortment of melons. This is Warren Littlefield. He's the new man in charge of all of NBC programming. He just took the job. It's a, a real promotion for him, and I'm sure you'll have many long, happy years uh, here at the network. Uh, well, if you'll excuse me, I, I think your next appointment is here. Good luck. Nice to meet you. Let me know if I can help. You know, I guess you really could describe Saturday mornings at my house in two words. Bunkhouse flapjacks. Here's the recipe. 100 pounds of flour, 50 gallons of milk, 12 dozen eggs, some butter, of course the syrup, but the secret is you have to make sure you beat it really well. Here, ladies and gentlemen, this is a dangerous thing to do. It should not be imitated. It was performed with permission under special circumstances.
Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome, welcome to NBC, home of the 10 minute ticker, because. What? What does that mean? Ten minute ticker. That's a big. Uh, that's a big NBC sports deal. They've promoted the uh, their brains out on this thing. Every, every ten minutes. Every ten minutes during an NBC football game, you get all of the scores from around the world. That's true. The ten minute ticker. And apparently, it's really catching on. Yeah. <laughs> we're uh, we're just back from a vacation. I had a. Uh, I have to tell you something. I had a very very hectic uh, schedule. A very busy vacation. But it was quite rewarding. I, I I did what I usually do. I traveled around the country giving lectures at various prisons. And you know, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, uh, today, uh, New York City schools have opened up, which of course means, as always, a big drop in crime here. And, uh, <laughs> you know. <laughs> Paul, did you hear about this? About what, Dan? <laughs> On the occasion of his installation as Archbishop uh, yesterday, Desmond Tutu received a, a telegram from William Rehnquist which read, you still can't rent my summer home. <laughs> what, a, what a kidder this guy what is. He's just, uh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. We'll edit those right out. Ladies and gentlemen, you I know, we've been, uh, this is strange. Uh, for those of you folks watching at home, uh, we used to do this show, well, we always did the show here. And then for a while, how long were we up there, Paul, in the other studio? Um, a good six, seven years. Uh... <laughs> no, then we, then we went up to another studio, we were up, up, up on the, the uh, eighth floor, a big, huge, beautiful studio, which was originally built for Beethoven, wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Something like that. Some, uh, Something like that. <laughs> and, uh, oh, it's a wonderful studio up there. And now we're back down here in this little tiny studio. And while we were gone, three months, was it three months, two months? Something like that. We don't know. While we were gone, they completely renovated this place and they did some wonderful things in here, but it's, it still feels a little confined, doesn't it? We, we, we're in 8H, now we're in 6A. Hal? Yes, sir. <laughs> yes, sir. Uh, uh, show, show the people uh, the new equipment that was installed during this renovation. Now, explain to them what we couldn't do before and then show them what we can do now. These are some of the wonderful multi-million dollar actually renovations that went on here in Studio 6A for us. And keep in mind that some of this stuff we, we couldn't do before the new equipment is in, but it's in now and we can yeah, do it. Yeah, here's something we couldn't do before and roll it. Okay, watch the... Yeah. <laughs> we, we, could, we couldn't do that before. And we can do this for the first time here. Okay, what else do we have? All right, Hal. Ooh, oh, I like that, Paul. Do we have some music for that? Okay, I I anything else, Hal? And here's the special one. This is one they worked all summer on. Here it comes. Okay, here we go. Brand new here in Studio 6A. Oh. We're, we're all on love. We're on love connection now. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. I, I think it's the new GE regime, don't you? I think there'll be a lot of call for those things on this show, definitely. <laughs> yeah, ha how, how, if we can, let's use those tonight, all right? Okay. Okay. Okay, Jimmy. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, we're, uh, we're back here in our, in our studio. We got a great show. Art Donovan is here. Ruta Real Cam Ruta. anymore. We don't have oh. the thrill. No, we don't. Oh. I'm sorry. But you know, we have that rotating heart. <laughs> Uh, but the, the thrill cam, apparently the, uh, the ceiling is too low in here and we can't do it, so uh, we're, we're pretty much screwed. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you, I appreciate that. Well, we'll see what we can do. What are we doing tonight? It's uh, Brush with Greatness. This uh, audience members stand up and tell us about experiences they've had uh, with famous people in their lives heretofore. Do we have a Brenda Kirkland with us? Brenda, come on down and pick up the keys to your new Buick. Brenda. <laughs> Hi, Brenda. How are you? Fine. How are nice you? Nice to see you. Where are you from? Toronto. Toronto. Oh, Toronto is, I keep saying this, one of the great cities in North America, isn't it? It is. What yeah. do you do for a living in Toronto? I work in a hotel as administrative assistant. What hotel is that? Ramada Hotel. Oh, is that the one always burns down? <laughs> no, no. It's, just, it's a joke. It's a fine hotel, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. And is it, is it right in downtown Toronto? It's or actually at the, by the airport. At, at the airport, yeah. 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 I like staying by the airport whenever I travel. <laughs> Uh, Brenda, uh, you're in town on a little holiday, are you? Yes, I Nice am. to have you here. And tell us about your brush with greatness. Well, a few years ago, I was out of, I'm, my, my hometown's London, Ontario. London, Ontario. Kenny, I've actually been there, too. Kenny Rogers in the first edition was there. Mm -hmm. And after the show, a group of us was hanging around, kind of eyeing up one of the other members in the band, a little younger member. Mm -hmm. And Kenny came up to me and sort of put his arm around and kissed Ooh. me. Ooh. And I was too... <laughs> 
<laughs> Kenny Rogers kissed you? And I was really too young to really realize today, you know, what he is today. Uh -huh, yeah. but and do you fully just... realize what he is today? <laughs> yes. <laughs> and if you'd known then, you'd have had him arrested, right? <laughs> Probably not. Uh, Probably okay, not. but I understand, Brenda, there's more to this story than you're telling us. Is that there, true? There sure okay, is. Okay, here we go. The writer's embellishment. Kenny right Rogers there. left me a little gift, too, one with a five-year incubation period. The doctor pretty much fixed me up with a couple of shots, but once a year, right around Memorial Day, I break out in a weird rash and gr grass. <laughs> break, out rash. break out in a what? Break out in a weird? In a weird rash and grow a silvery beard. Silvery beard. <laughs> okay, Brenda. Do we have something for Brenda? Here's Bill Wendell. Oh, that you know, uh, GE has taken over, so we have for you. Oh, this is great. It's a case of light bulb. There you are, Brenda. Enjoy your visit. Nice meeting you. Thank you very much. All right, how are we doing? Okay. Is there a uh, Jerry Torsney, uh, Mr. Torsney? Right here, Dave. Hi, Jerry. How are you? Nice to N see you. Nice to see you. What do you do for a living, Jerry? I'm an accountant, Dave. And where from? Um, I'm from New Jersey. Uh -huh. Garden and State. So Garden State. Great. Born and reared there? Yes, sir. Uh -huh. And how long have you been an accountant? Um, let's see. For about a, what, a year and a half now? Mm -hmm. Do you enjoy that? No. Mm -hmm. Well, <laughs> I if you had a choice, and uh, it's hard to believe that a guy like you would have a choice, but if you did... <laughs> What, what, would you, what would you rather be doing? A talk show host. A talk show host. <laughs> uh, okay. You know, everybody, it seems like everybody has a show now, so great you job. just hang around the lobby and let me know what happens. <laughs> Jerry, tell us now about your uh, brush with greatness. Okay, Dave. Um, a couple of years ago, I was staying at a hotel in San Juan, and I rode up in an ele elevator with Bob Goulet. Mm, Robert Goulet. Yes. Yeah. And... Uh, in any event, uh, he was looking a little bit uh, drunk at the time, and he was clutching oh, now, on... wait a minute. Can, can, he, can he say that? Can he say that about a man? No. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so, okay. so he, was, he was looking a little bit drunk. Yeah, really gone. Yes, and, yeah. and he, in his, like out on his feet, was he? Well, he was just looking a little rocky. Yeah. We'll put it that okay. way. And he was clutching on to a chocolate Easter bunny about that high. Mm -hmm. Clutching it with Yeah. But, you know, that's not all the details. No, Dave, it's not. Okay, here we go. <laughs> Goulet must have been pretty lonely, because everywhere I went, I bumped into him and his constant companion, the chocolate, the chocolate bunny. bunny. In fact, I was honored to be a witness at their marriage in a hotel chapel. <laughs> <laughs> Some say it wasn't normal, but who am I to begrudge That's a man right. his one chance exactly. of happiness? Exactly, sure. <laughs> All right, Jerry. Yeah. A case of the GE soft white light bulb. There you are. Thank nice meeting you. Have a nice time. Thank you, sir. One more? Do we have a, uh, a Terrence Kreider here? Dave. Terrence, nice to see you. How are you? How you doing? Go ahead and speak right up, Terrence. Uh, where are you from, Terrence? Pearl River, New York. Uh -huh. And what do you do for a living? Then? I'm a New York City police officer. Oh, is that right? That's well, correct. We, we certainly need a lot more like you. <laughs> that, but that's, that's a tough job, isn't it? It's, it's, it pays the bills, Dave. Uh, do, you, do you enjoy your work? I do, yeah. Yeah, well, God bless you. Um, I don't know why I said that, but you're, I, I, I want you to know that we appreciate all the work you guys do. I hope you do. All right. And, and leave my car alone from now on. <laughs> uh, Terrence, tell me about your uh, brush with greatness. Well, Dave, I was on a routine patrol, 4 to 12. Uh, happened to be after a Yankee game. Are you game. really a New York City policeman? I certainly <laughs> am. I certainly am. Okay. Routine patrol, 4 to 12 on the Grand Concourse. Happened to be after a Yankee game. Uh-huh. We see this uh, vehicle blow two red lights. Blo oh, this is police talk. Paul, listen to this. <laughs> yeah, I want Paul. <laughs> they saw a vehicle blow two red lights. <laughs> it's like Miami Vice here. <laughs> well, that means they, they ran two they red ran, lights. They ran, ran two, two red lights. Blew two red lights, all okay. right. So uh, me and my partner turned around. We got behind the vehicle. We finally pulled them over, and uh, we went up next for license registration insurance. and. Uh, he said, my name's Dave Winfield. Right, right. And you said to him... Go ahead, Dave. <laughs> oh, no. Really? You just, you just let him go? He's too big for me, Dave. You know, I had a car impounded by you guys once because the registration me. had died on the thing, and it was a rental car. And, 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 and I said, hi. They knew who I was, obviously. That's why they impounded the car. Uh, but that's not all the story, is it? No, sir? that's not okay, the whole story. Okay, Terrence, tell us about the Before we let Mr. Of... Winfield go, we did a routine check of the trunk. Mm -hmm. I noticed it was full of sawed-off shotguns, counterfeit money, and what appeared to be a human foot. <laughs> oh, God. 
God. <laughs> However, Dave was hitting 300 at the time, so he looked the other way, if you know what we I mean. We do know what yeah. you mean, Terrence. What do we have for Terrence, Bill? Another case of GE light bulb. There you go, sir. Nice meeting you, Terrence. Nice meeting you, Dave. Good luck to you, sir. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you very much. Welcome back to the show. We got a good one here tonight. Did you have a nice vacation, Paul? I did. A couple of weeks. Do you anything uh, memorable? Vacation, Can you highlight actually. something for us? I was uh, spent a little time in St. John, a wonderful island. Yeah. Beautiful. Flew into island. Miami, did a little work for Donnie Johnson on his new uh, rock video. Is that right? I don't know whether you saw uh, the debut on MTV, the awards. Let's Big see. debut. I'm in there with him. I'm his best friend, Logan. Now, what, you played, Seriously, you, I played you Don, played Don Johnson's, Johnson's best friend. Best friend. Well, now, how did you get this part? I guess he just, he wanted the hippest guy in America to be his best friend, and, you know. But I... <laughs> so we did, I've been, I've been there, back, there, back. There's a lot, a lot of yeah. work in these hour long. It's not a video, by the way. No, it's a long form. It's a long, long form. form right? Yeah, Donnie's long form. Yeah. Well, and I'm I gotta say hi to all the kids down there. I wanna say hi to all the characters down there. Passionata, Chewy. Paul. The dead boys, Paul. all the kids, Okay, you know. Anyway, we're back from vacation. And yeah. How was your vacation? You know, I, it was all right. I spent actually about the full two weeks trying to get in touch with little Anthony and the Imperials. <laughs> I have their number. You should have called. I, well, you were off with Don uh, yeah. and... Uh, Donnie. Doug. Who? Donnie. Donnie. Oh, I'm yeah. sorry. Donnie's long form. Uh, our first guest this evening, uh, ladies and gentlemen, is one of our favorites. He was one of the best defensive tackles ever to play the game of football. Right, Paul? Yes, David. Uh, he was also the first Baltimore Colt elected to the Pro Football Hall of Fame located in Canton, Ohio. He is also a very entertaining man, and most important, this guy can eat more hot dogs than any human I know. Please welcome Art Donovan. <laughs> Good to Terrific. see you. Did you have a nice summer? Very good, very good. Very busy. In fact, you know, seeing I've been on the show, I got a little nervous today, and I cut myself five times shaving. Is that right? I guess that's the only way I can lose weight. <laughs> what did you do this summer? Uh, just worked. Yeah, worked around your, you own a country club, yeah, right? Yeah, right. We own a swimming and tennis club in Baltimore. Mm -hmm. Keeps us pretty busy. We mm -hmm. have a lot of weddings, and we cater a lot of affairs. And, uh, are you are you ever there at the club? Oh, sure. I'm there yeah. all the time. I'm the only one that can start and stop the pools. Uh -huh. Start and stop the, the pool? The pool, yeah. Press the button. Oh, I see. Yeah. <laughs> press the other button, it stops. Yeah, yeah. Uh, now, football. NFL got underway yesterday. You probably know about the 10-minute ticker, don't you? No, I didn't know what you were talking about. I was looking at the 10-minute ticker. Uh, now, um, is it true you can eat that many? Uh, somebody said, like, 30 hot dogs. Is that what you told uh, us once before? I think I could go for 40, maybe. If you were going to have hot dogs tomorrow night for dinner, how yeah. many would you eat? Uh, it's all according to what kind they are. If they're kosher, I eat more than the regular. If they're the ones from the stand on the corner here, mm -hmm. I had to stop at $22 worth one day. I almost ate myself out of the wallet. Yeah. <laughs> did you, when you were playing football, did you and other members of your teams ever have uh, eating contests? Well, yeah, well, really, we used to, we all older fellas, we all hung around in one room, and they said, who do you think's the biggest eater on the team? I said, what are you talking about? He said, well, how about chicken, southern fried chicken? So I said, well, Don Joyce is the right defensive Don end. Don Joyce? Joyce. I yeah. said, he can eat more than uh, anybody else. The guy says, no, for 100 bucks, Gino Marchetti, who was the other great defensive mm -hmm. end. So we had a chicken eating contest. Uh, Sunday afternoon, over at the dining room at Western Maryland College. This is in training camp. Yeah, we set it up. The coaches left, and here comes a typical southern Maryland meal, southern fried chicken, mashed potatoes, and peas. Mm -hmm. Well, Marchetti, he's eating the chicken. But Joyce, he's eating the chicken, the mashed potatoes, and the peas. The whole deal. There goes my hundred dollars. Mm -hmm. I said, don't worry about the damn mashed potatoes and peas. Just eat the chicken. <laughs> he starts bones and all now he's going at this right. thing. So Marquette gets the 26 pieces of chicken. He says, I quit. I can't eat anymore. Joyce, we got 25. Wow. So two more, we win. Yeah. He says, oh, I'm still hungry. And he ate 36 pieces of chicken. <laughs> but we wouldn't let him take anything to drink with it, wash it down and fill his stomach. 36 pieces of chicken. Yeah, so afterwards when he stopped, he said we had a big pitcher of iced tea in front of him. So there you are, drink it all. We don't care if he blows up. Now, because 
You know, we won yeah. the we won the bank. Sure. Yeah. And with that, he reached into his pocket and pulled out three pieces of sacking and dropped them in his ice thing. No. He's watching his wife. No. What a guy. Is that a true story? True story. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> what was what was the toughest uh, toughest game you were ever in? What was the toughest the worst injury you ever saw? I broke my leg. One. Oh, the worst injury I ever saw. Well, let's start with you. What's the worst injury you I ever had? I broke my leg. Yeah. Some guy fell on me. He kept jumping on me. In those days, you could do anything. Right? <laughs> so at the end no, of the game, all right, all right. A guy actually jumped on your leg several times. Said, oh yeah, he jumped on me twice. He broke it twice. <laughs> they left me sitting on a bench in a Los Angeles Coliseum after the game was over, and nobody even bothered with me. Yeah. And uh, one of my teammates, Sister Averno, had to come down and carry me all the way up to the locker room, which was about five city blocks. Yeah. Hey, they, they didn't care if you couldn't play the hell with you. Yeah. We can't use you. Yeah. We're not going to pay you. Yeah. Do you. Do you think the guys that were your contemporaries are more tough physically than the guys playing the game today or not? Well, I wouldn't want to answer that question because if you meet one of these young dudes, they'll have to knock you on your back. So I don't No, they're tough. Football's a tough game. Whether tough. Yeah, you played regardless. in the 50s or you played yeah. now. Now, what was the worst injury you ever saw well, in football? We were playing the, the Chicago Bears, and we had a quarterback named George Shaw. And George, we didn't Shaw? George Shaw George from Shaw. Oregon. And yeah. we didn't think he was too tough, you see. And he's going back, get the ball from the center. Dixon's Mansky was the center. And he went back to throw the ball. And here comes this guy named George Connors blitzing. And he's got a 20-yard head, head start. And as George Shaw goes to get tackled, he goes forward. And Connors hit him a shot in the mouth, broke his face mask, broke his nose, uh, did everything. And they dragged George off the field. And they sit him on, on the bench alongside the Sismansky, who's the center. And George Shaw says to Sizzy, Sizzy, Dick, how do my teeth look? He says, I don't know, George, they're not there anymore. <laughs> and that was the end of it. Ooh, ooh. And then if he didn't go back in the game again. Yeah. Is that right? Then he, he went to play. back, he continued See, to play the guys game. Guys were tough then. Tough? Well, yeah, they were tough. Let me ask you a question. Uh, you've had that haircut, what, since you were about five? <laughs> <laughs> well, I think I was born like this. <laughs> probably, and probably the doctor, the doctor says, how much do you weigh you when you're born? And Dr. Shaughnessy went like this. He says, 17 pounds. <laughs> My poor mother couldn't walk for uh, a month. But <laughs> Terrible. Uh, let's see. We'll uh, do a commercial. Here. We'll be, all right, Donovan is here, Rita Rudner, and also uh, Tama Janovitz will be uh, with us in a, in a couple of minutes. All right, uh, let's talk about the, the worst place you played. Then I want to ask you a question about the uh, NFL instant replay stuff. Well, let's talk about weather and everything. We never played in that bad of weather. I think the... Uh, when you played, there were not many... There were no indoor stadiums, were there? No, no. no. There wasn't any uh, artificial grass. Uh, yeah. You know, it's been a long... Time. In fact, when I played, they didn't even use helmets. Look what happened to me. <laughs> well, anyhow, I think the worst conditions we ever played on them... <laughs> we played an exhibition game in a brand-new stadium in, in Louisville, Kentucky. And the only thing they had there before was a football game. All week long, they had a circus. Mm -hmm. Oh, they got a circus, they got elephants, and they got horses, you know. Yeah. And the Giants were playing, we were playing the Giants. And they would break their offensive huddle, and their line would come down, and they'd get set, and they couldn't move. So we'd go down, and sometimes you'd pull up a lump of you-know-what, you know. And anyhow, when we move, we'd poof, sort of flip it. The Giants never saw us the whole afternoon. Oh, oh. oh stuff all over the yeah. place. <laughs> And the official says, that's all right, we can move. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Those were the good old days, weren't oh. they? <laughs> all right, now let's talk about it. Now, what is the rule now with the uh, instant replay? If there is a call in question, one of the teams can ask for a ruling via the, the videotape from the booth upstairs? Yeah, well, one guy calls the other guy, then the other guy goes up in the booth. How, now, how many of those do you get during the game? I don't know. I, I saw one guy, it took him a half an hour, then they went down on the field again, then they had the instant replay again. They said no penalty. Yeah. So I don't, I don't know. I think it's good, though, because these fellows are only human like anything else, and, uh, you know, a, an official can be wrong. Mm -hmm. And why should a game be won or wrong if an official makes a, ball, a bad call? I, really, I think it's a good idea. Yeah, but the, then the argument is, and I happen to agree with this, that it, it's the human element, and over the season they're going to even out anyway. Well, I don't know too much about the human element. And, uh, and <laughs> I've never really I know, Art, but there's no sense in calling attention to the obvious. No, so. I've never, I've been called a lot of things, but not human. Uh, 
Anyway, uh, now your old buddy Don Shula took a beating yesterday, oh, didn't he? Yeah, what Shula, was the score? 30, uh, the 50 to 28. 50 to 28. And Shula was smiling. They went over to shake hands with the other team. Yeah. And he's going, oh, good you, you are so big. It, and you it, imagine it, what Shula did when he got in the locker room? I don't know. Is Shula a tough guy? Oh. He's a, he's a wild man. Everybody yeah. thinks he's a saint. He looks very mild man. Oh, yeah, because he goes to church every morning, you know? Yeah. She was a bad man. Whoa. Yeah. Once we were playing up in Milwaukee, he, he and the guy that's his offensive coordinator, uh, Carl Tassif, Shula stole the cab. Stole the cab? Stole the cab, put the cab he's had on, stole the cab, drove it back to the hotel, got out and opened the back door, and Tassif's in there drunk, <laughs> and they would have never got caught stealing the cab, only Tassif insisted on paying the fare. Yeah. <laughs> and she was saying, you damn fool, it's me. Get in the hotel. <laughs> uh, any any predictions? Boy, they, you, your old uh, friends uh, got beat yesterday, too. The Indianapolis oh, Colts. Oh, huh? my old friends are going to get beat many a time. You think so? Yeah. <laughs> it's the guy that gets playing quarterback from now. What? Hooga Boom. Hooga Boom. Yeah. Hooga Boom. Well, they thought that would help. Hooga Boom. He's going to really help. Yeah. What, 33 to 3? <laughs> they need more help than Hooga Boom. They yeah. need... Uh, I would say they need about 20 more f good football players. Oh. Hey, if he, uh, you know, I really believe this now. The guy's the quarterback for the Cowboys. To me, he looks like he's a little cockeyed. He don't always throw the right. <laughs> and if he can't beat, and Hogan Boone can't beat him out, yeah. the Colts are in trouble, oh. bad trouble. <laughs> Uh, Art, I'm, I'm sure they've had him examined. Well, and, uh, I don't like quarterbacks anyhow, so but, it doesn't make any sense. Is it, can you predict the team now that you think is it going to be the Bears? you think they can repeat again? Oh, yeah, the Bears, they'll repeat. That, that's a good football team. Tough team. That's yeah, your kind of play, team, isn't it? That's just the way they play football is the way it should be played. Yeah, okay. All Give right. them no quarter and ask no quarter yeah. or <laughs> full speed ahead. I don't know what the hell. <laughs> All right, nice to see you again. Come back again anytime. We'll be back. Coming up on uh, this program tonight, author Tama Janowitz will be here and comedian Rita Rudner. Those folks coming any minute now. Tomorrow on the program, Susan St. James from uh, Kate and Alley, and uh, also musician Philip Glass and society orchestra leader Lester Lannon will be here. Lester Lannon will be here. That's right. So try and get a nap in the afternoon. Stay up so you don't miss it. Oh, look at this. We have a, a quiz about conduct of behavior here in New York City, sort of a, a sociological profile of activity going on in New York City. Paul, do you have any music for this? Stop spreading the... All right. That's it? That's all there is? You know how it goes. Well, the... All right. Play some more of it? No, no. It's... That's too late. Forget it. Let's go. We've got we to gotta move on. I'll play later. We're, by the way, we're trying to get this uh, show extended to 90 minutes, five nights a week, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Yeah, and you're, you're the ones that are going to have to sit through it, too. <laughs> uh, number one, uh, these budget-minded tourists. Watch the monitor, if you will. There they are. These people are uh, eating, A, a box lunch brought from home, uh, B, snacks from sidewalk vendors, or C, stuff they found in the fountain. <laughs> Uh, these men you're looking at right now, these guys have just deposed, disposed of A, garbage from an apartment building, B, refuse from a construction site, C, witnesses from the Gotti trial. <laughs> and of course, the answer to that is A, garbage from an apartment building. Uh, this next scene demonstrates A, the joys of parenthood. B, the variety of city lifestyles. C, that Cher, in fact, has relatives here in New York City. <laughs> now, uh, this dry cleaner offers his customers A, free moth proofing, B, free box storage, C, an eerie revival of Annie. Next, this paramedic is waiting for A, his relief to arrive, B, his shift to come to an end, C, the Run DMC concert to let out. <laughs> Native New Yorkers refer to this man as A, a handsome cab driver, <clears throat> B, carriage man, C, a radio-controlled goofball.
Uh, this man is reaching into the paper bag for A, his lunch, B, his receipt, C, the reassuring touch of his mother's head. <laughs> Can you help me out with one of those lovely effects, please? All right. Number eight, this man's suit demonstrates A, easy care fabrics. There he is. B, the, the new fall designs. C, the tragedy of colorblindness. Okay, that takes us to number nine now. This horse's future is A, in a New York City park. B, on a farm upstate. C, on a bun with special sauce and cheese. They're not, they're not booing, of course. They're just chanting, Dave. Dave. Number 10, now this man is waiting for, oh, get ready, Paul, to cover me here. This man is waiting for A, contributions. B, media attention.